We're here. Amazing. Greetings, beloved, and welcome to the Open Book Festival 2024 podcast series. My name is Ashanti Kunene, your hostess with the mostest. And in the run up to Open Book Fest that's taking place between the 6th and 9th of September, I'm in conversation with some incredible writers. And today I have Lisedi Mulefi with me. Lisedi is a certain author, documentary filmmaker, photographer, and copywriter. He's just published his first book called Patient 12A, a memoir. Hello, Seth. Thank you. Thank you so much for Hello. being with me. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, baby. Oh, I'm so excited for today. <laughs> I, I, I feel like this is the first podcast type thing I've done. Um, mm. Possibly ever, actually. So, mm -hmm. so this is exciting. This is yeah, exciting. Yeah, and you, like, let's go, man. Let's let's get it. I'm I'm here for all of us. So let's let's start. How are you? How are you feeling? How are things right now uh, in your life? Hey, right now in in your life. How are you feeling? How's your heart? Uh, feeling 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 pretty good. It's been um. It's actually been a, exactly a week since since I launched Patient Twelve A. Um, at exclusive books, Rose Bank here in Johannesburg. So, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been, um, wow. How do I even like Jesus, man? Man like me doesn't even struggle with words, right? But, but uh, I have struggled to find the words. I think to express just, just what a what an incredible ride it's been so far. Um, you know, um, I didn't think the book would move people. I think okay, okay, that's probably a lie. I probably knew a little bit, but I don't think this much, you know. So, mm -hmm. so I'm really, really, really fortunate, and uh, yeah, man, I'm just kind of looking forward to everything that's 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 coming, you know, that's including open book. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, lots going on. Feeling feeling pretty that's bright. Amazing. How I are mean, you? How how are you? How am I? Oh, I'm. I mean, well. you're not the only one that gets to ask questions, right? I mean, I I I, I can. I surely. Yeah, I mean, uh, surely <laughs> yeah. that's not how this works. But okay, if you have questions, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get to ask any questions whatsoever. It's, 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 <laughs> I mean, no one's asked before. But if you feel there are questions you're not asking, please go ahead. I I don't mind. I don't mind. We're in a open I mean, we're in a conversation, so I mean, I, I just yeah. want to know, you know, like, yeah. who, how are you doing, madam? Are you? <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Shall yeah. move. Okay, okay, okay. I know. See, fantastic. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, no, we're there well. We we're well. I'm excited to talk to you. I think, yeah, I think there's 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 good vibes. So, speaking about your book, you know, yeah. one of the things that I think is quite powerful about it is that it's a journey. I have a friend that likes to say that trauma is the inability to tell your story. The fact that you're able to tell your story means that there's a healing on levels you know i'll never know deeply but there's a healing that's taken place where you've able you've been able to release the story so what made you choose this modality to share the story what made you write this book and are we going to get another one from you like are, we, are, you, are you gonna get a sequel or are you gonna get another book but there's no sequel. there's no sequel let me just say, there's no sequel to vision 12 you know what I mean? <laughs> what was, like, like, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe working with somebody else who, who might want to share their story in a similar way, which is actually part of the reasons why I wanted to do this. You know, I, I think I think there's parts, there's parts of ourselves, parts of the human experience, I think in South Africa that, that I don't think we talk about enough. Um, part of the things that make us just so human, you know, uh, uh, and and yeah. So so for me, will there be more books that explore just you know? Our experience, absolutely. Will there be a yeah. sequel to Vision Twelve Eight? Not a chance. Not a but, chance. Uh, <laughs> as long as you're getting more <laughs> books, that's fine. <laughs> no, no, there'll, there'll be there'll definitely be more books, you know. So, so yeah, I mean, enjoy it, you know. Uh, please do. It. I mean, you know, I, I hope you enjoy it. Um, but um, yeah, I, 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 I I'm, I'm, do. Is, is this is, is this where I answer the question about why? Yeah, yeah. Why did you write this, this story in particular? Yeah, so so I mean, I, I think that I think there's a few reasons, right? And they're all just kind of converged at different stages, at you know, different parts of my story. I mean, you know, I think I, I spent six years writing this book, and 
you know, there were many times when I thought I shouldn't write it, and many times when I thought I should, and every single time had a different reason, a different mm -hmm. rationale behind it, you know. Um, I first started writing it after my mom passed away in 2018. Mm -hmm. And after the life that we had had, I thought, okay, you know, like I think now I now's now's the time you know and um and I did it in, I think in 2018 maybe maybe I hadn't admitted it to myself but in 2018 I think I was doing it because I was like you know I, I wanted to do it because I wanted to face off with the enemy the same enemy that my mom had faced which is mental illness mm -hmm. um except that I wanted to win right and that's another thing about trauma right as an adult you kind of recreate the same conditions in order to kind of contend with them again but as an adult this time mm -hmm. and uh I really kind of wanted to face off with my own uh, pretty traumatic childhood and um, our story and, and understand it better. And also, you know, I believe that had I known many of the things about mental illness, about depression, about mental health, perhaps broadly, that I know now, I think it might have gone a long way toward saving my mom's life or, mm -hmm. you know, might, I think it might have gone way toward I rescue my relationship with her, you know? Mm -hmm. And so for me, you know, um, just, yeah, just, just, just this huge gray area, just this cloud that hangs around, that, that, that hangs over us, which is sort of like, you know, our experience of ourselves mentally and what mm -hmm. it means and what it's really about felt like mm -hmm. something that I needed to kind of, you know, uh, interrogate and investigate and, and 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 you know and and write about and so I think those are the primary reasons and lastly I just wanted to live up to my name, you know. Um, for those of us, write about for the, the people listening that don't know, what does that mean? Explain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you know, it's it's it, you know what they say, right? It's like it's not a good joke if you have to explain it, but it's a good thing it's not a joke. It's um, not a joke. It's, mm. it's, it's, yeah, you know, it's real. So I mean, I. Um, Excuse me, it's like a scooter outside. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. But yeah, so so for those that 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 don't understand what I mean by just trying to live up to my name, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll take it from the top. Uh, so for those that don't quite understand what I mean when I say I just wanted to live up to my name, um, you know, my name means Lisi my name is Lissini, and that means light. You know, mm. so. Uh, so for me, you know, my mother was very intentional, very deliberate in the way that she named us. Um, and so, you know, for me, it was about kind of being able to go into the darkest territory um, and and re-emerging safely. And I wanted people to kind of be able to go into that darkness with me, to travel along with me into it from a safe distance um, mm. and, and be able to emerge, to, to re-emerge safely which is something I hope, I wish I had had um, when I was, yeah, at my worst in 2016, at the time the book is set. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, that's so profound. So much of what you said resonated with me, particularly the piece around had I known the tools and the language and the what around mental health prior to your mom's death, you probably could have saved her. I feel the same way about my dad as I shared with you. My father lost his battle with mental health and committed suicide in one of the most dramatic ways. Um, and, you know, we fast forward, what? 20 years this year, next month. Um, yeah, it's been 20 years. Sure, I just looked, it's been 20 years. So you fast forward 20 years and like I find I understand it's simply because there was no, or there was no space to talk about the thing, to talk about the difficult thing. It's why I say to everyone, whenever they engage with me is that a core principle of mine is open honest conversations about the difficult things especially if we say we care about each other you know yeah. and that leads like. me into like the next question around you know why why is this stuff why do you think the stuff is so difficult for us to talk about especially as black people black south africans you know I think on the one hand, as a woman, we we share a lot as girls, but I'm also feeding into the patterns that I've seen around black men. We don't necessarily have space for us to talk about mental health. Why do you think that is? And like what what is required for us to 
stop setting up the elaborate social choreography when we're actually not doing okay <laughs> and we're tall and conventionally handsome. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think, I think there's so many reasons, right? So, I mean, I guess all I can do is share, you know, the mm. ones that I believe in or, or, or at least those that have been a lived experience for me. And, and um, I think, you know, it's not so much that we don't want to share. Mm. It's not so much that we don't want to talk. It's that we're so busy surviving, you know, we're so busy surviving. We're so busy. We're, we're so deeply embedded. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Me thank ring. you thank you Bye. i think we're so just deeply embedded in this act of survival <laughs> of sneezing you know and, and... <laughs> just give me yes, a second baby. Oh. Oh, the sinuses are getting to you yeah they are. Oh, like what is it like change of season i don't know it's like hay fever or something i i, I don't know <laughs> um but yeah i think um we're so busy you know i think we're, we're so deeply you know embedded in this is like the act of survival of, of daily survival that i think really taking the time to you know inquire emotionally within is is it, it isn't you know kind of gets in the way of that survival i think living you know, um, yeah, you know, living in a capitalist dunya, you know, yes. you know, living in a capitalist housecape makes it very hard yeah. to, yeah. Have time, you know, so, so, you know, to, to find the time, the moments, um, you know, to, 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 for compassionate self-inquiry, I think is, is quite difficult um, for, for yeah. many men who, who, who are busy, who are so deeply embedded in the act of survival that that gets in the way mm. of uh, staying alive. Um, mm. And, mm. you know, it's kind of that, and that's kind of what's ironic, right? It's sort of like, you know, life gets in the way of living and, you know, you just kind of, that's that's actually what kills you, is, mm -hmm. is, 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 is just this heightened, you know, um, need for survival and this heightened alert, you know, state of alertness, this heightened so emotional vigilant. kind of, mm. oops, sorry? No, I'm saying heightened uh, emotional vigilance as well. Heightened emotional vigilance. And, and, and so that vigilance is essentially what makes it very hard for us to then connect meaningfully because we're so busy trying to survive that even, you know, it, it corrodes the sense of community that is essential to finding healing that we that you must rely on to you know to be able to I think um work through work safely through your mental health and work through mm. your mental health, you know, um you know in the company of others, you know, and and, and with the help of others, which is so essential. Mm. So mm. I think we, we're so busy surviving and we're also trauma. I think we 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 are so deeply traumatized that, you know, before you can kind of survive yesterday's trauma like you're already on to the next one you already think about tomorrow's yeah, problem yeah yeah so, so sure. yeah i think that's the reality of it it's it's yeah. it's, it's really quite pragmatic quite practical yeah, yeah. but you know what i think what i find so interesting you said you oh you use such beautiful english compassionate self-inquiry no yeah um like I think what I've learned as well in the work that I've done or that I work that I'm doing and have done and you know I'm going to continue to do is that that survival survival requires compassionate self-inquiry like yeah. the you know so I hear you about yes we're caught up in the capitalist system trying to survive this capitalist hellscape but part of the us surviving it is taking care of the mental health you know so trying yeah. to sh shift understandings that you know self-care is important but what does black self-care look like what does that look like for you how do you maintain hope and sunshine in your life i know your name means light like how do you hold on yeah. to <laughs> in your day-to-day -day, i suppose you know like in the midst of all the chaos that's happening in the world yeah. um in the midst of these hunger games these survival games we're all playing 
you know right mm. yeah i'm I'm not sure how well I'm doing at it, to be honest with you. Um, I'm, I mean, I, you've just published the whole book. You're out <laughs> there publishing. I mean, you're looking well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, sure. But I mean, I, I think, you know, that's the thing, right? I mean, Patient Suave was written from a place of sheer necessity for me. Mm. It, was, it, was, it was absolutely about, it's it's essential that, you know, I, I, I publish something like this because... Um, because of because I know how hard it is to um, to 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 do the work of compassionate self inquiry, you know, and 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 because I know how many of us are afraid to even talk about it, you know, and so even the writing of sort of my ways of my little ways of kind of you know um, keeping my head above water, reminding myself of what's important to me, you know, um, and living in a way that you know. Um, uh, is is true to 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 my to my mind, body, and soul. Essentially, mm -hmm. as corny and as cliche as that sounds, right? Um, when you think about it, you know, I think to be able to access sort of like, or to be able to, you know, accept that you need care, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. is really responding to your body saying, "Donna, we need care," you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I mean? like don't a get time out, Joe. Ah, don't, ah, don't. I mean, come <laughs> on, bro. Like this is a lot. This is a bro. Like how much longer? You know, you know, I heard, I heard. I think it was Jim Carrey who said, "Depression is literally your body saying, I need deep rest, deep rest, yeah. deep rest is required from this avatar." I <laughs> so I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how far you know you. You know, but on some level, I mean, I, I, I truly believe that depression is is right. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think if 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 you know if your body if the human if your if, if your body is capable of experiencing depression, then it is as um it is as strong a messenger as it must be as welcome a messenger as a smile. Tells you that you're happy or that you ex you're experiencing joy. Wah, wah, essentially, wah, your wah, body wah. responding to your conditions. It's wah, wah. Your you know what I mean? Like, like it's it's essentially your body saying, "I'm a born man." You know, like, uh, something's you not know, correct. In the same way that you would respond to something. You know, something's not combining, chi. <laughs> you know, couldn't <laughs> all. <laughs> Amazing. No, this I, is your I, body. You know, you know what I mean? Like. I agree with you. I agree with you. I often say to my yeah, friends, I mean, you must find rest before rest finds you. Because if your body rests you for you, that's an arrest. That's not peaceful. So choose to rest peacefully before you are arrested by your body. Listen, that's a word. That's and a that word rest right is not that's painful. That's that might be a Yeah, because your body will stop you. <laughs> it's an arrest. You are being arrested and it's not nice, you know. For sure, and and I think so. You know, as soon as I walk yeah. into the clinic, you know, I it's actually the first in the first page of of my book. The first thing I describe is just is this courtyard scene, um, and that mm -hmm. for me, you know, that for me was yeah, I'm I'm glad it happened in that way because as soon as I walked in and I just saw ordinary South Africans, many of them under thirty, you know, all kind of sitting in a huddle, talking about cigarettes and just being so ordinary. I was like, shit, you know, like, so wait, this is all of us? You know, like... Wow, we're, we're <laughs> all like, like, just in one way. Mm. You know what I mean? And, 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 and I think that's something so beautiful about going to a place like that, like a kiss mm -hmm. Immediately you walk in and it's just like all the South Africans, mm. you know, kind of you know, working through the trauma of surviving being an everyday Love. ordinary yeah. South African. Yeah. You know, and there's something about that that's deeply affirming because it says to you, A, you're not alone. Yeah. Um, and B, you know, it, it's, 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 you know, and it's kind of walking into, on my first day at a kiss, or walking into the courtyard, you know, and, and seeing my peers really talking about cigarettes um, was, was really comforting in the sense that I could see how much they had gathered around each other for their, mm -hmm. for each other's survival. Mm. You know, and, and and that for me was a firm reminder of, you know, why it, what what is such an essential part of healing, um, which is community. You know, you, you need to yeah. find people that you can talk to and speak to, and 
um, and Ish. again, outside of those kind of environments, you know, everybody's trying to survive. Yeah, you know, no that's, so true. that's so true. Because I think not having anyone to talk to makes the burden seem singular, you know, makes it seem as if it's just you. Makes it feel very lonely. Mm. You know, it makes you feel lonelier than you already are, right? Mm. And, and and so you walk into a place like that, and you know, uh, you're immediately reminded that you know you are absolute. That's the last thing you are is alone. Um, and so that's another reason why I chose to write twelve a, and I chose to write it in the way that I did. You know, I didn't kind of go here's twelve lessons I learned from there. I was yeah, like, nah. that's day one, day two. <laughs> Papa me, Papa me. Cap, cap you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show you. Let me tell you. Let me, let me walk tell you with what. me. Mm, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's 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 that was the intention in you know in, in writing this book and in writing in the way that I did. It was about going in cap it prior. Let me you know. Let me let me let me, let me, like, let me tell you. you. Won't believe some of the shit that I heard. You know, mm. you won't believe some of the shit that I saw. Mm. Um, you know, so come along with me. You know, and and for me, that you know, um, another great opportunity in writing it in that way was that you know it made it feel more personal um, and more human because really we were just a bunch. We were just about forty humans gathered in a building, desperate for survival. And mm. I think that was a story. I I felt in my heart of hearts that was a story worth sharing. I mean, it definitely is a story worth sharing. I think what's coming up for me is like, you know, where do you get the courage? <laughs> the liver. <laughs> yeah. The audacity the liver. and the cover. Mm. The liver. Where did you dopper the, the liver? You know, the gumption, the call to <laughs> right. do that, to extend your hand to fellow South Africans and be like, Kappa me, Joe, let me show you the darkest parts of myself. Right. And my story let me show you something you know because yeah. that's not just yeah I suppose like it's one thing to like heal and write the book but the courage it takes to then extend the invitation to go along with you you know like I've there are many books I've written that no one will ever read because it's nobody's business but I had to heal right. <laughs> you know but right. the and it's also because I don't I have yet to find the courage to extend my hand the way you have so talk to me about that like you know um, you know, like honestly, like it almost feels like I was set up, you know. I can't <laughs> lie, like straight up, like I've just had such an extraordinary life, you know. And and by extraordinary, I mean out of the ordinary, you mm. know. I'm, I mean extraordinary in in in, in the most, all the uh, way, in the least pretty sense, in in in, in like the in the most <laughs> in the least glamorous sense of the word. You know, mm. which is that it my life was out of the ordinary. Mm. And because my life was just so kind of, you know, difficult to understand and, and, and sort of explain, you know, I what am I gonna do? Just keep all of that trauma to myself? No, like um, We are suffering all of us together. Ah, listen, darling, like, you know what I mean? Like, 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 wait, like you show me your trauma, I'll show you mine. I it's love really it. Um, nah, nah, jokes. I mean, you know, the, the point is not to trauma bond, but rather, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of just, um, yeah, to reaffirm just kind of, you know, just just how universal the human experience and pain is, you know, and 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 I happen to have had a very, very painful childhood. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, having had a, a childhood that painful, um it felt like the only way to give it meaning is to sort of make it into something else mm. you know it's to take all of that pay, to take all of that pay from the, from, essentially you know yeah. and to alchemize it in a way where you know it gives my mom's life meaning because now i can draw insight from it i can draw lessons from it mm -hmm. um you know as, as painful as it was you know on a as, as a day-to-day -day lived experience mm -hmm. um you know, as an adult, you can revisit painful traumatic memories and 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 look for opportunities for learning and 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 hold you know, the child that you were in that situation, you know, um, in the way that you know that they need it. Mm. Um, so there was that exercise first, and then secondly, I'm a writer, 
you know, and, and right is right. You know, like right I is right. So. That's exactly what they do. Mm. You know what I mean? Like we 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 there's a great story, we write it and, and ultimately a good friend of mine from Lani Bukoli, um he he always used to say to me, you know, if you know, if 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 you can it's not worth it unless you can get a story out of it. Mm. And if you can get a story out of it, no matter how, no matter what it is, no matter how painful, no matter how harsh, it's worth it. Mm. Um, you know, and I think that's a writer's, that's essentially right. a writer's mindset. Is that yeah. you know, no matter where the story takes me, you know, um, I will. I'm still the main character of my story, you know, and all of this is like content for my coming out as a superstar because surely. How can we suffer so much and not be great? You know, it's no, like it must be the plot. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, it must be the. It, it, listen, this plot is hot. I was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, sometimes you gotta look at your suffering, man, and be like, damn, this this plot is actually kind of crazy. Like, who wrote this? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. <laughs> no, I have a, I have a, right a, a thing that keeps me saying like to answer my own question like how do I maintain hope and sunshine in life there's a basic oh, so rule. Ask, right but huh? okay, okay so I couldn't ask the question no but you can ask the question ask me a question what would can you I like to know? so how do you keep bright you know how do you keep you're so how do, cute <laughs> how do you how do you how do you how do you stay alive how do you stay bright how do you you know mm. in the world that's just or dark and well, firstly, yeah firstly exactly what you just said I've gone through so much in my life it must be because I'm this amazing main character movie film star surely so my life <laughs> yeah. my life is a yeah. film I'm, going, I'm the staring of this film <laughs> and everything that I've yeah. gone through has qualified me to call myself a staring kidna staring <laughs> Ease of joy, and then that's the first time. And the second thing yeah. is like a deep, like a deep spiritual understanding that you know, when they say God never gives you things that you cannot handle, there's a reason why. There's a reason why, as painful and as messy and as dark and as bullshit it is, there's a reason why you're going through the thing, and there is an equivalent size blessing. So the bigger wow. the pain, the bigger the trauma the larger the blessing because it's not allowed to suffer without light they cannot only be winter summer has to come and they cannot only be summer winter has to come spring autumn like everything has its time and its place so if you're Deep suffering like, Preach, like go deeper, man. Like I'm this is this is yeah. yeah so that's yeah. how I, that's how I look at life, you know. Like the, if you're suffering for long and deeply, that means that the universe is preparing you to have the capacity to receive the blessing that comes as a reward for sticking through and having faith through whatever you're going through. That's just a basic law of the universe. It's not allowed to make you suffer and not bless you. And you can't be blessed without suffering. Doesn't work this way, unfortunately. You know. So yeah, that's how I maintain hope. I just remember that this too shall pass. And if it and if it hurts a lot, I know that I'm going to be happy to the same degree. You know. So then that calms me. Mm. Mm. I nothing nothing less for your life, man. And 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 I also receive your message so clearly. You know. It's such a beautiful, I think, yeah, it's, it's such a beautiful, I think, way of, of kind of, and, and deeply spiritual, like you said, you know, um, way of understanding what our path is and, and, and what our path, what the path prepares you for. You know? What the so path that, prepares you for, exactly. And the, the example for me is like my dad, my dad's suicide is the reason why I do this work. Like, no. had I had my dad stuck around? That's right, yeah. You know, I probably wouldn't be into open dialogues about these kinds of things. I wouldn't be doing dialogue facilitations, et cetera. I probably would have just, you know, gone and done something else. But that story, the impact it had, the seeing the severity and consequence of not taking mental health seriously, seeing what silence in community does right. is part of right. the impact 
for who and what I am today, you know? So, yeah, man, everyone has their origin story. 100%, man, you know? And um, so, yeah, we're waiting for the publication of yours. Ah, but, you, you know, we still need a ship. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you for... <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for showing us, you know, how it's done. I think the thing that I'm taking from you and your story is just the courage. Because yeah, no, life life requires courage, you know. And um before we close off, is there any thing that you could say to your younger self as your big self now that could also be a lesson for our viewers listening to us today? Um, yeah, I think two things, um, you know, um, and, and, you know, there's nothing poetic or profound about it. I think it's just, I'm sorry. And, and thank you. It's really, really it. You know, I think I'm sorry. Um, it really was as bad as you thought it was, is, mm. is what I would say to, mm. to that kid. Um, and yeah, thank you for being a G, man. Dog. <laughs> I mean, damn, you know what I mean? Like that kid saw me through, bro. Like, you yeah. know, that kid, even you know, even the kid that took me to a kiss, so, you know, twenty five years old, and I wasn't involuntarily admitted. I went there myself. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, just kind of shout out to that kid, man. You know, what a G, and 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 to kind of you know go through so much and and still try and still want to remain kind and still want to remain gentle i credit a lot of that to my mother you know mm -hmm. i think she instilled um you know those those values so so deeply you know so so shout out to the boy for listening to his mom you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know shout out to the boy for listening to his mom's best lessons um but uh yeah i think yeah it really was as bad as it was. I'm sorry. And thank you for being a G. Thank you for being yeah. a G. Oh, yeah. oh, that made me all sorts of nice emotional because like my, I'm, you know, at the what was, yeah. risk of oversharing. Me, I have yet to have a conversation with my younger self because she's so mad at me. She's like, where the hell did you take our confidence? That girl is stronger than I am today, you know? Oh, like, always. That's always the case. That's always the case. Listen, those dark badass. First of all, they have no concept of uh consequence. Uh, yeah, they have no concept. They just like, hey, listen, this is this is this is where we are going. And this that's it. And and boom, you know, and, and now look and, and now we're sitting here, you know, um because there's a because there was a girl in the woman and because there's a boy in the man. And so you know, full credit to them. Um, you know, so so I guess you are having a conversation with her more often than you realize. Oh, and on that profound note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. This was <laughs> the city and Shanti. We're signing out. Sadie, thank you so much for your time for chatting. With I don't know too. if I'm doing gang signs. Like that's weird. Let's do it again. Take it from the top. Gang signs, <laughs> if it's fine. <laughs> Oh, All right. Thank you. Thank and you. we shall see you guys at Open Book Fest, the 6th to oh. 8th of September. Ciao, ciao.